Welcome to Make Your Mark podcast, where guests share their experiences, insights, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And I will be your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make Your Mark podcast. And oh my goodness, I have been so excited for our guest today. Like for weeks when she said that she's going to be coming on, I was super, super excited because I knew exactly what I was going to ask her. I knew the questions, right, that are going to be juicy that you guys are going to want to listen to. And the great thing is her business Oh my goodness, she's making so much change, so much impact in the world and in the world of education, right? School education, where we know there's masses of issues and challenges in the school system, but she's here to make some changes and oh boy, has she blown up just recently? Oh, I don't know if I should tell you. Should I tell you or should I leave it? Maybe I'll just let leave it to the end and mention it later on down the line where you have to listen and find out what's happened, how she's blown up, like she's actually been on TV. All right, please welcome to the stage, Rada. Oh my goodness, Rada, I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm so excited to be here, Kay. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. I knew I had to have you on here. When you said yes, I was like, this is going to be an epic episode right now before we get into the nitty-gritty of what you're doing how you're making change like it's freaking awesome what you do i would love for you to share with our audience today a little bit about your journey right because we all know that building a business right making that big impact making change in the world doesn't happen overnight so what did the journey look like for you um, right. Okay. Well, um, I haven't always been in business. Um, obviously, it's something that um, I've been doing so for maybe four years now. Uh, previous to this, my career has always been in teaching throughout most of my sort of adult working life. I was a teacher in mainstream education for 15 odd years, so, um, SCMH for eight years. So I've spent quite a lot of my working life sort of just being in that system, being a teacher. I sort of worked my way up the profession. Uh, I ended up falling into special education just because I think I suited it. It suited me. You know, I I sort of uh, was able to relate to the sort of children that um, were in that sort of setting of education. And by the time I left, you know, I was exams officer. I was a senior member of staff in the school that I worked in. And Um, I sort of learnt about all different types of education and been practising some pretty out there strategies for what worked and what didn't work with some really disengaged children. Um, And then, yeah, I left in the pandemic um, just because everything changed. All the kids were at home. um, The world was looking very, very different. There were certain things in education that sort of I didn't I suppose on a personal level agree with anymore the landscape was changing and I wanted to stay true to myself and I launched uh, Little Crafters Boxes which is my company now Um, and even the the company has evolved over the years it started then as a craft subscription box for children um, just to engage them and give them something fun to do during the pandemic when nobody was allowed to go out anywhere Um, but obviously the world went back to well, as normal, if I can use that term, it went, <laughs> the pandemic came and went, and then the world changed again, and most kids went back to school. Um, but my company evolved because lots of kids didn't actually go back to school, and home educating became, you know, a really talked about subject, and 75% more children were home educating post-pandemic than they were pre-pandemic. Um, And mental health became, you know, so important because there was anxieties, there was all sorts of things that all of a sudden came to light that I think they were always there, but people were more sort of receptive to talking about them and actually addressing those issues. Um, And I suppose we've evolved since then. I've been listening to my uh, families that we work with since then and evolving and changing and changing. And we're now at a point where, yes, we've still got the craft subscriptions that we do, but We also have a whole host of education that the company can provide, which is certified. So children are able to actually 
get access to learning and an alternative therapeutic way of learning from home, you know, or from an alternative provision if they find mainstream education a challenge. So it's really exciting because I think for me, the vision has really become about making education accessible to everyone. And it's exciting because the landscape is changing and we've grown now to a point where um, we're actually paving that way. It's revolutionary, some of the work that we're doing. And um, yeah, we're making we're making a huge difference at the moment. It's great. You definitely are. You definitely are. Now, a couple of questions that come to mind from what you just said here, right? Like you quit your job and decided to start a business during the pandemic. Now, didn't anyone say to you, you must be mad. You must be insane, right? Did you get any of that kind of adversity from friends and family? And if so, how did you deal with it? Yeah, 100%. Um, my immediate family, so my parents thought I was absolutely crazy. Obviously, I was in a senior role in a school after a long career, you know, and I sort of quit for, I don't really know why I did it. I think it was coming anyway for a long time. Um there's a lot of red tape being a teacher now in today's day and age. There's a lot of sort of bureaucracy and with things like Ofsted curriculums and being told what you have to teach. And then you've got the inner workings of schools and the politics that comes with that. Um, and, you know, it became, I suppose, over the years, less and less about the teaching and more and more about box ticking. Um, and also when I was in an SCMH school, one thing I learned was that I mean, there was about 100 children that went to the school that I taught in back then. But for every one child that got a space there, there was 100 that went to tribunal and didn't. So I was seeing those gaps. And it was big then. It's way bigger even now. Um, so, you know, families are really fighting hard for those places. And where those children were not getting a place, a lot of them were sat on waiting lists for years at a time without an education. So um, I suppose a lot of what I did now was... Um, sort of it came from knowing sort of where the gaps were in education I suppose you'd have to work in the inner workings of of the industry to really see that and I did you know and I saw it and I thought actually do you know what we need this pandemic's happening right now anyway it was a calculated risk all the children were at home so you know it was just a fun craft subscription box in my mind I was thinking do you know what we'll manufacture these little craft boxes I'm going to give up on my day job. I've done my bit for mankind. Um, this is it now. I'm going to, you know, we were working out of a little house in where we used to live in Leicestershire. I mean, my husband was a joiner. He built me a little shed at the back, you know, and I thought, I'm going to work out of here. I'm going to, you know, make these little things and I'll send them out and this will be my retirement and I'll garden in my spare time, you know. Um, I had no idea it was going to get this big, to be fair. And here we are, you know, multi six figures now. We're three years in. And it's just growing and growing and growing. The need is greater and greater. And, well, we are, um, yeah, we're thriving. I'm loving it as well. I'm loving the impact that, that, we're, that we're making. And I feel like we can really make some noise. And the more impact we make, the more inspiring it gets. So, you know, it, it was going to be a cottage industry, but it's not much of, <laughs> much of a cottage <laughs> uh, anymore. And, yeah, it's a much bigger beast. We've got big premises now and staff and everything. Oh my goodness. So I want to go into that a little bit more. And we are, we are going to be touching up on um, how your husband supports you. Okay. Um, because he is a big support. I know this. I saw your social media videos. I know <laughs> what he gets up to in the background. Okay. So we're going to come to that in a moment. But what I really want to ask you right now is, you know, you started up this business, right? You didn't know where it was going to take you. It was something that was inside of you that you just kind of felt like you needed to do and it just expanded. Like, that just speaks volumes, right? There's people that always say, follow your desire, follow your heart, right? But people don't, I guess, understand what that means or even follow on that kind of pull that they're getting to do something that they actually want to do, do and be passionate about. And so... How did you know, right? What was the feels, I guess I'm asking you, is when you realise, no, this this has to be done, like big changes need to be made to kind of feel, I guess, fulfilled and making sure that you're on the right track and on the right path of doing what you can do the most to bring the biggest impact. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so to start off with, I knew that the concept would work because one of the things that I was practicing in my own classroom before I left teaching was hands-on learning and learning through play. Um, I was working with really disengaged kids. And back then, my topic in my subject specialism is computer science. So teaching programming to children who refuse to write or are completely disengaged from curriculum learning was actually quite challenging. Um, but I found play methods that, you know, I bought little robots and things for them to program and mess around with. And there were times we'd turn the entire classroom into a working computer, you know, so they'd have to program in sort of, you know, when the door opens, it makes a creaking noise. And when you sort of <laughs> touch the bananas, the different tunes come up on the on the um, on the computer because they made like musical pianos and things like that we used to do sort of those really sort of fun engaging play-based methods and all of a sudden I was able to teach programming and teach quite difficult computational concepts to those kids so that is how I knew that you know a craft or a way of making and using hands was a really good way to engage learning I saw the work that was being sent home for, for, for children even at school during the pandemic and that was, let's just say, not engaging um, enough for any child. You know, nobody wants to sit there and do six hours of English and maths while you're sat at home and already not allowed to go out. Yeah. You know, with my own children, we sort of, school weren't very happy, but it all went in the bin. And, you know, I took my kids <laughs> out and showed them how to climb trees and things. <laughs> oh, my God, I love that. I love it. <laughs> and in fact, I was going to come to that because I was like, you, again, you started a business during the pandemic, right? Whilst you had kids, right? And kids that you had to, I guess, homeschool at the same time, as well as being a wife, as well as being a mother, um, you know, like being a daughter, all these different hats that you're wearing, not just in your business as you're starting up and you're a solo entrepreneur, but also all the hats you're wearing in your personal life. Like, how did you manage to juggle all those things? I mean, I think back then it was easier than it probably is now because the business was at the very start and um, I wasn't envisioning that it was going to get this big mm. um, so quickly. So, you know, I, I, in my head, I, back then I had retired, you know, from teaching <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to have a little side business, you know, working from home and, you know, I was going to be with my children, which mm. is what I wanted anyway, where, you know, because they were at home, I didn't particularly want them to do work that they hated during the pandemic when everybody was already really stressed. Um, and that's when I thought, actually, let's do a subscription box. I had this little like, engraving cutting machine, which I'd learned to use. And I thought, you know, I started off just by making little wooden shapes and things for my, my own children. Um, and I thought, you know, I used to do it as more of a hobby more than anything else. And it, it just, I don't know how it snowballed. You know, we launched the subscription box um, we took 100 subscriptions almost overnight within, so I think it was four days of opening the doors wow. to the point that I actually closed the doors because I got scared. <laughs> oh, my God, I got 100. I was thinking, there's 20 little boxes. The children can help and we'll do it together. And, right. you know, a fun little cottage, you know, a little work business from home. I thought that would be lovely. Um, then we took 100 subscriptions, four days, and then we shut the doors because... At that point, these were subscriptions as well. They're not one-off orders. So people wanted oh, monthly yeah. items. Um, and, you know, I just got a little bit scared, I think. We shut the doors and we, we, we did before filled them. But literally in that week, right, our house went up for sale because we needed premises. We couldn't manage. People were banging on our door saying, we want this subscription, wow. um, you know. And so we eventually, I think three months later, we opened the doors again to the public and allowed more people to cook come and subscribe and then six months later by the time we got to June so I started in January by the time we got to June we'd moved out out of Leicestershire into Lincolnshire which was quite stressful I'm not gonna lie <laughs> two kids in tow and moving a business and moving house at the same time I do not recommend it to anyone to do all <laughs> of that all at once together <laughs> But we did it, you know, we've got premises. We, you know, immediately we started hiring staff, just having the space helped. Um, and 
you know, you just manage it. The kids, you know, they they helped, you know, yeah. as they've grown, they obviously enjoy the crafts that we put out. They do think of our workshop as their own personal toy shop. <laughs> and it's like a free for all every time they go in there. <laughs> I love that. I love that. See, I was going to say, you know, the fact that you mentioned earlier that they had all this school work to do that was sent home and you kind of just threw out the window was like, no, the kids ain't doing that. And so when you kind of showed your kids the method of teaching that you came about, right, that you're now putting out there, did they say, mom, this is mad. This isn't work. This is playing, right? Like what was their thoughts? Their, their thoughts are very much that it's really unfair that they have to go to school and all the little crafters' children get to do this. <laughs> and we have that we have that conversation regularly, but you know, I think with school, right? I think there's a place for school and I think there's a place for home education and alternative methods of learning. I do think there are issues with the schooling system, which I don't completely agree with. But um for my own children, who I'm very, very lucky, they are neurotypical. Um, so, you know, they don't have challenges that some children have when they go to mainstream school. And also the things that I don't like about mainstream school, like the another brick in the wall scenario, the behaviorism approach, I can sort of teach them another way from home as well, because they still get exposure to little crafters and the alternative way of working and learning and just enjoying life. Um, and also going beyond that, they're also, I mean, us, our our workshop is next door to where we live. So it's all on the same, they're different sites, but they're within walking distance. So even from a very, very young age, the children have opportunities to do bits of work experience and learn processes and see how a business, you know, bricks and mortar business actually operates. And I think that will give them invaluable skills as they grow up. Um, my eldest, he's nine now, but so even since he was seven years old, he can work the Royal Mail postal system, which is amazing, you know. <laughs> what do you mean by that? So we put out, obviously, um, hundreds and hundreds of parcels go out in our post every single right. month. So he is able, you have to, when you've got a business account, you have to actually go onto the postal system, you log into Royal Mail, you know, we've brought all the addresses across from our website into Royal Mail, where the parcels are going, and you just put them through, you say how much they weigh, where they're going, and then it'll print you out a nice little label, which goes onto the box. It means you don't have to go to the post office and get a stamp. You right. Can, because we get sacks and sacks of posts. You know, and he has sat there and he's done hundreds of these. They get pocket <laughs> money for doing this, you know. Oh, but what skill? Wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if they like it. You know, there's no child labor or anything like that. I think <laughs> you have staff. <laughs> no, I love it. You basically, you created yourself a little worker bee, right? Yeah, when, when they feel like it, it tends to be more in the sort of summer holidays. Sometimes they'll go and do an hour at the weekend. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just when they feel like doing a little bit. You know, it's nice that we can give them that sort of real real business exposure and sort of teach them those other skills that they perhaps don't get in uh, mainstream education. So we're trying to do it so that they've got the best of both worlds for now. Um, and it works. It works for our family. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Now, I'm curious. Why did you not just take your kids out completely from mainstream school and just teach them the way that you're teaching all these other kids? They get both. So, I mean, if somebody, the way I look at mainstream school, right, if I, if they weren't in mainstream school, especially at the very beginning of Little Crafters Boxes, I wouldn't have been able to help the thousands of children that we've helped. So I need, I do need some help with them. I wouldn't be able to home educate them full time and then be able to do Little Crafters things as well. Um, saying that, you know, never say never. We haven't completely decided yet if they will Mm. Um, go to secondary school or whether they will just embrace whatever comes next with little crafters boxes our children now in the wider community um you know yes they're learning in, um, in a different way but they still have access to qualifications we're looking at opening an exam center here on site so that they can come and do their exams you know by the time they get to that age if they want to um but it's an interest-led approach it's therapeutic it's constructivism that means that we build on their thoughts and their interests rather than telling them what they have to learn and in what order um and that works you know I've seen the transformations and having had seen those transformations 
Um, I'm not going to lie, it's like really scary saying that I might take my own children out of school, being an ex-teacher and being a scholar and being as academic as I was, you know. But I think actually leaving teaching and working with a different community and really understanding education has given me a very different view on education holistically, I suppose. And I can see that there is actually another way now. When you're in education, working inside the system, you're quite indoctrinated and you you know you, you do it a certain way because that's all you know and you get told that that's the right way and i believed that as well for a very very long time it's only now that i actually can see it from a different perspective and actually there are other ways and we're actually doing our children a disservice by not showing professionals that there are more than one way to to get to the other side because there's loads of children now falling out and but that's because these children need that other way and mainstream can't provide it because they don't have the training. And that's where we are now. Wow, that is awesome. That's awesome. Oh, oh my goodness. I've got so many more questions to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> and so as your kids are basically grown up, right, and seen, like, mum's mum was a teacher, right, she decided to have this wacky idea that no one thought that would work out. It would just be a little hobby, right? And now you've created this massive business right where you're making six figures in your business within three years of this idea populating right and have they come to you and said mom like how are you doing this I want to do this too like I want my own business have they started asking those kinds of questions my eldest has um he is very very academic and he's got these little books now on being an entrepreneur and wow. he's been reading away and he thinks that you know he's going to one day take over little crafters oh. um, my eldest he sorry not my eldest my youngest he's more of a um, socialite he just wants to party and have fun um, <laughs> and he often asks me things like mommy when you die will I just get all your money oh my goodness <laughs> So he's, he's got a different strategy in mind. It's not quite the same thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, that is yeah, funny. no, I think, you know, whatever they do, we'll support. You know, they've got a bright yeah. future ahead, I'm sure. I think the key is just letting them follow their own interests and desires. Mm. Um, and in terms of the actual growth of the business, um, it was never about, for me, it's never been about the six figures or the multi-six figures or even seven figures, which I'm sure we will get to. It's always been about listening and that's why it's grown, I think, because over the years we have listened and we have looked at the landscape of education and we're looking at how the tide is turning and we are listening to those customers and asking them what it is they need and then providing them with that. Um, and I think that's key. Um, with education, it's not just, you know, like a simple textbook exercise when you listen to your customers and you go, oh, you know, we want to improve our customer service, blah, 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 blah. It's not about that. It's about because this is life changing stuff. You know, they, they're in desperate need. They need stuff. Um, and it, it transforms their lives when you give it to them. So we're making such an impact. And I think that is the impact that has motivated the growth um, and yes, you know, there may be some fruit at the end of that, but that's not what I'm particularly looking for, um, at, you know, financially at the moment. It's more about the change and um, I'm loving the change. It makes me really happy. I love it. Oh, my goodness. We can tell that you're really passionate about this as you talk, right? This is awesome. Now, I want to speak about some of the ups and downs that you've had. Now, we are in the same mastermind group. OK, with Lisa Johnson. And that's how we've got to um, meet. And there was a message that you put out there in Slack that we have within our private community. Right. And you said you were fighting to build a school. Right. And I remember we had this conversation in London, right down Piccadilly Circus before we went to go play Crystal Maze. Yeah, because <laughs> we did to play too. Right. <laughs> right. And. You're talking about how you're building this school and how it's going to be, you know, um, so impactful. It's going to change so so many different ways around how people do things, like the teaching. Like, you're super, super excited, right? And then you put a message out there, I think a month or so after, say that the school's not going to happen. Can you just share a little bit about what happened there, right, and how you felt? 
Yeah, um, so it's been an ambition of mine to open a school for a long time now. I'd say a good decade. Even while I was still a teacher, I tried to obtain a building where I used to live. That was an old school that had shut down. Um, so I wanted to reopen that. The population of the town we used to live in had grown, and I wanted to open the um I wanted to open up the school again, you know, so that there were there was a space for the children. But that school had been earmarked for residential by the council. So rather than opening a school back then, they stopped it in its tracks and they put more houses there, which I thought was ludicrous. So I couldn't do it then. So it kind of died a death. And for the, at, at that point, I didn't do it. Um, now that we are where we are with little crafters, boxes, um, the opportunity has presented itself again. Um, we are at a stage where I am now sort of another 10 years into my practice so I know that much more now specialism with um you know children that have got special educational needs um and we've got an established business that actually runs an established curriculum which has been tried and tested we know it works the children within our existing community are growing as well um so what I wanted to do was I wanted to open um on site we've got you know quite a large site here in Lincolnshire I wanted to open a school on this site um but, you know, I feel as though there's so much bureaucracy. I've been trying to do this for a while. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through with things like planning permission, local authorities, um, and then, and, you know, funding, you know, how to get funding for various things that need to happen. And, you know, you start jumping through the hoops. And at the point that I think um, I spoke in our group, I think I was at a place where um, it just feels as though there's so many obstacles in the way. It's not easy, you know, and I'm a professional that really understands, um, you know, I could provide so much value. I could, I really understand education. I understand that style of education and how to make it outstanding. You know, I could really provide a great, yeah. something really, really special, but I just felt like there were so many obstacles in my way. Um, and going through the motions made me realize that actually, if I continued down this path right now, it's going to take away from what I'm currently doing because I'm, I am still the CEO of another company, which a little crafters box is, you know, and that takes a lot of my energy and I haven't got time to battle. Yeah. It has to be as easy as possible. You know, they should be throwing support and money and everything at me to do this because it's so um, rare to find somebody, you know, that's got the skills um, and, in the end, the decision was that for now, um, I haven't completely ruled it out. I'm not going to lie; it's still, it's still sort of. <laughs> I've, I've sent, um, I've sent, I sent an um, email to my local council, you know, with my thoughts and what I would like to see happen, and um, I've left it there. I will be unemotional about. I will try and be unemotional about <laughs> it happening or not happening, as it were. Um, but as it stands, I don't know, you know, I'm not sort of setting my heart on it at the moment. Mm -hmm. It'll be become more like a three or a five year plan, which will kind of give me a bit more time to get my ducks in a row and really establish little crafters boxes. Oh, I love that. OK, so we're just putting it to the side for now. Right. Because the battle, the fight isn't worth it right now because you're going to lose focus in your business. And we don't want to do that because you're helping so many people right now. Right. So that this is awesome. So this also shows that sometimes we do need to pivot. Right. We do have to kind of make different kind of decisions because there are twists and turns that will happen. But it doesn't mean that you totally give up. Right. It just means that you just got to take a different direction and come back round at it later on down the line. Right. And I love that you're doing this. This is a great point here. And so I checked on social media because right? I love checking all of my guests on social media to see what they're really getting up to. Right. <laughs> and so a few months ago, I saw some stories that you put up. OK. And you got really upset. You were really, really upset. You were almost in tears. And this is where we realize that challenges come in all sorts of different forms. They're not always huge, right? But at the time, they're huge for us. And so you actually purchased, I think it was some shelves from Ikea. <clears throat> Do you remember? No. Yes, yes. I remember. <laughs> You know what I'm going to say? You ordered some <laughs> shelves from Ikea. 
and you measured up and everything. You and your, hus your husband went down, right? This is where your husband really supports, right? On all these different little things, different levels, right? But they all count. Um, and you got it back and you had this slot that is meant to go in and it didn't fit, right? Could you share with our audience that what was going through your mind because you were so upset you did these videos on stories. You were in tears, right? And what was actually going on here? <laughs> right, I can, you could get me started for a long time on this, game now, because I actually have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought these shelves, um, and um, they weren't originally in for that space, but when I saw this space, we had this really awkward space in our house, and um, I took one look at the shelves. We were tidying the room, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, as you do, and um, I looked at the space and I pondered to myself, you know, what could we do with this space? <laughs> and I saw the shelves and I thought, actually, these shelves would go really, really well in this space. Um, and, you know, we can use it for X, Y and Z. Um, so, you know, brought the artillery in, the brawn came in, the husband came, you know, the two boys followed him, you know, because they like to think they're daddy's little helpers. <laughs> <laughs> and they started scratching their heads and they got their tape measures out, you know, and started doing their things with it. And um, they decided that it wasn't going to fit, um, to which, you know, I completely disagreed. It absolutely was going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love. This, you were like really persistent, like, it's gonna fit in there. It's gonna it had to fit. Yeah, it had to fit. It was textbook. They said right. It was ever so slightly too small because of the skirting board, and because you know you had to kind of go around a corner to angle the the shelves in, and the angling wasn't right, and all this, all this jazz, right? All these fancy words about angles and things. So I said, no, let's try it. You know, let's try putting it in. So you know, it took both of us to lift it. And the boys are saying, you know, it's not going to fit, mummy. It's not going to fit. Um, but I was, you know, just ignored them for a moment. And so we picked, we had to lift the, the shelves over the skirting board to then angle it into this corner space. And obviously it didn't fit and it got stuck in the wall because then we couldn't get it out either. <laughs> it got wedged in this sort of corner and we couldn't, we couldn't pull it out or push it in. So not only did it not fit, it was then stuck and then everyone was going oh yeah we told you it wasn't gonna fit and and then Eric started you know saying to me you know that you know I should have listened to him and all this nonsense <laughs> nonsense about listening so you know eventually he got this back out again um, and I told him that he had to make it fit <laughs> he had to figure it out <laughs> I said can't you shave a bit off the side or something like that you know nobody will see once it's in it's in we're not going to move it um, so, you know, the shelves went outside, started shaving bits off the side, you know, puffing and puffing as you do. Um, and after sort of two or three goes, you know, we eventually got it to fit and it worked. But I was awesome. <laughs> it was a huge celebration and my shelves now sit proudly in that awkward space and they look fine. So the moral of the story, I think, here is always listen to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. When I saw the, that story, I was like, this is absolutely hilarious, right? But it's so rada, right? It was like, so you. I was like, this is, it's humorous. It wasn't at the time for you, right? But for everyone watching, it was like, so entertaining, right? We're like, <laughs> rada all over, right? I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, so I, was like, say, uh, I remember back then. We were... Where there's a will, there's a way. Always. Absolutely, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, I really want to talk about something that happened yesterday, 25th of July, right? 2024. I was scrolling through your social media again, right? And I saw that you have been interviewed by ITV Central News, right? Like you were on TV. How did that happen? And uh, what was, like, I know it was about your business and all the things that you're doing to impact change in the world. But I've got to know, how did that make you feel when you knew you were going to be interviewed on TV and everybody was going to see you? Yeah, brilliant. You know, um, at the moment, I feel as though there's a really important message that needs to 
sort of go out there. ITV got in touch because they are currently doing a spotlight and it was a national story on um, SEND children and how there are so many of them without education and without alternative placements at the moment. Um, and they asked me if I knew any families that would be willing to talk to them um, about, you know, their issues with waiting for placements and, you know, how long they've been waiting. And um, naturally, I have families all over the country because, you know, we work with them. And so I was only too happy to, you know, introduce a family to them. And um, they asked me to come along and share some words as well about, you know, what's going on in education and, the, they're calling it the attendance crisis, but again, you know, me being me, I um, disagree a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, th th there's a bit of an issue in politics at the moment where they think that school, you know children are not attending school or um, not having access to school, even though they're on school roll, and they want to get children back in school, mm. um, which I hear. But there's no point putting a child back in school if they can't access the curriculum. Forcing somebody to sit in a room on a chair is not going to make them learn. Um, and I think the point here seems to be more that they need to change that system and they or they need to find a way whereby they can help that child access education. Then the child will engage with education. Otherwise, companies like mine exist because there is no alternative. And yeah. that's the point. Those those. Um, I think those families that are all sitting in limbo should all have access to things like Little Crafters Boxes because at least they'll be getting some sort of certifiable education and have that therapeutic learning going on at the same time while they are fixing the system because it's not an overnight fix. You can't just pull the kids back in and everything's wonderful again. Um, and anyway, this is what the article, this is what the report was about. And um, yeah, they asked me to share my thoughts. So... Off I went and shared my thoughts and it was <laughs> it was great. You looked awesome and what you actually shared was actually mind blowing, right? Thank you. I feel like you've created um a simple enough process, but it took someone like yourself to step into that and say, no, this change needs to happen, right? To create the impact that you have done. And so much so that ITV Central News interviewed you like that just speaks volumes and the fact that this all started with just an idea like it was just going to be a little hobby right and now the biggest thing is I can say I know someone famous <laughs> <laughs> right but it just shows when you follow your passion when you keep pushing forward right these things do actually happen and it becomes easier because all you're doing is following your passion. All you're doing is that drive to make sure that you are making an impact to certain individuals because you know that change needs to happen. And I love that about you. Like you're on fire all the time. You are. You are. Although like we know you've got an emotional side and that's fine. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Right? But we love that about you. And the thing is, we had this conversation um, off camera, right? And you were saying, but you say ums and ahs a lot. And you say, I think a lot. And, you know, you can get emotional. I'm like, but who said those things are wrong? No one. There's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, this is why we love you, Radha. This is why we all love you, right? Because we know it's coming. We're like counting on those tears now. I mean, <laughs> there's, no, there's been no tears on this episode. But no, I haven't right, cried yet. <laughs> yet oh well I know you have a special gift right for all of our listeners today and I would love for you to share what that special gift is and also how it's going to benefit them sure um so we have a special guide for everybody today that, that they, they can download from our website and it's all about crafting their way to calm and we're all about therapeutic learning, but therapeutic um, activity in general, really, to help you feel um, calmer, less anxious. Um, and that applies to children and adults. You know, it's it's ageless, really, because I think that's something we could all do more of. So you can download a free guide on our website, and that is littlecraftersboxes.co.uk forward slash wellbeing. Awesome. Oh, my goodness, guys. Make sure you do uh, get that download, 
right? This is your first step to kind of seeing a different perspective on what education could be like, right? How it can um, be so much more fun than what we all knew what schooling was like. So go ahead, reach out to RADA, right? Like go and stalk her out on social media, right? Do it, right? Connect with her, get the downloadable because she's going to be showing you a whole different perspective of what education can be like and it can actually be really good fun. So make sure you connect with her. Raja, oh my goodness, it was so awesome to have you on this show. Like so many golden nuggets in such a short amount of time. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. Thanks for listening to Make Your Mark podcast at www.makeyourmarkpodcast.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get this and every other episode that comes out. We have lots of great stuff coming, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments. I appreciate it so much. And I look forward to serving you in next week's episode.